Hey, what's up, everybody? Everybody, welcome back to the Club Junkie Podcast. Hopefully, you're having a great Thursday. Getting closer to the weekend, getting closer to golf. That's all we care about. <laughs> well, we care about a lot more, but that's <laughs> what we care about on this podcast. So before we get into today's show, just want to let you know this episode is brought to you by Titleist and the Pro V1 and Pro V1X Golf Ball. For the best in the world, the goal is to improve every day. Same goes for all of us dedicated to this game, and it starts with choosing a golf ball you can trust. The Titleist Pro V1 and Pro V1X have set the standard for, 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 for performance, and now they just got better again. Both models are engineered with high gradient core technology that delivers lower long game spin for more distance and more consistent flight. And of course, you can expect that trusted drop and stop greenside control so important to shooting lower scores. Pro V1 is the best combination of distance, spin, and feel in the game and delivers a more penetrating ball flight. Pro V1X, my ball, flies higher and spins more in the short game while still giving you low spin on longer shots to maximize your distance. Outperform your best. Learn more about the new Pro V1 and Pro V1X at Titleist.com. So, yeah, we're here again, man. These weeks are flying by. I can't believe it's already May. Um, Yes, the whole funny May thing. My wife already got me and sent me the whole, uh, you know, what is it, uh, Justin Timberlake, it's going to be May thing. So I've already been hit with that. Um, But, yeah, it's already May. It's wild. We're into uh, week three of of, of the league this tonight. So uh, I've got uh, the YouTube video over on on youtube uh under you just go to golf wrx and uh the youtube video is there what's in the bag got a good one this week i think and uh i'm feeling a little better about the swing i've been uh, hitting a few balls on the mat just trying to work on getting a few things uh, ironed out and i feel uh like hopefully hopefully this week i'll be to turn around a little bit uh last week was another struggle shot another 43 exactly the same and it was just like I, I got off the tee way better it was just i was the king of good shot bad shot good shot bad shot i just couldn't put two good shots together so uh it was a little bit of a struggle there just i didn't make any big numbers or anything i just i, I literally made some bogeys and a bunch of bogeys and that was it so uh we're getting there i think i'm gonna get to uh, get close here so Anyway, the what's in the bag's up. Uh, like I said, I think it's a pretty solid bag. I'm pretty excited to uh, to go with it. And, uh, yeah, I've been uh, hitting some stuff and playing a lot of clubs. I, I played over the weekend. If any of you follow me on social media, uh, on, on Instagram, at Club Junkie Pod, uh, you knew that I was playing in the rain. And uh, I was playing one of the, the better courses in Metro Detroit called Shepherd's Hollow. And it poured on us. So when I set the, uh, when I set the tee time, it was supposed to be like, high 70s beautiful day all that it was going to be great and uh unfortunately that changed uh the night before and <laughs> we uh, we basically just got dumped on uh we kept playing though we played through most of it and uh it was just uh hold on a second. I forgot to put the uh, the old phone on uh on do not disturb there so anyway um it was uh yeah, just a. Uh, it was it was still fun though. Went out with my brother, uh, my brother in law, uh, and a buddy of ours, and I mean we still kind of had fun, but man, we got soaked. Uh, found out that my rain gear was far less uh, waterproof than I believed that I thought it was. So uh, my jacket was leaking all down the shoulders and into my uh, my sleeves. But what are you gonna do? So hit a few good shots there. Uh, found the a, a, a driver combo that I really liked. I do have to say hitting the new whiteboard really well uh, i'm definitely going to be doing a show on that one soon uh i want to hit it on, on on the launch monitor just have some numbers to go with it but man i tell you what i've hit that in a couple different heads and hit it really really solid so uh definitely a shaft that'll be looking to go uh you know towards gamer status but uh other than that been hitting a lot of stuff finally playing some golf and it's been great so today we've got uh two things i'm going to go with uh the first one we're going to go with iron shafts baby um graphite iron shafts uh and then we'll hit up uh, a little accessory later on so uh but yeah it's uh it's been so i've been talking about these for a little while uh, i've had them shafted up and these are going to look terrible uh, on youtube because they just don't they're all black but uh, these are the we're going to talk about today the wow just breaking stuff the ust dart v uh, iron shafts. So these are the TSPS, TSPX concepts, uh, the Dart V, and this is kind of their high-end uh, graphite iron shaft. And uh, this thing here, they make it in a bunch of weights from basically 90 to, they make a 90, a 105, and a 120. So you've got uh, a couple different options. You can get it between regular, stiff, X. Uh, you know, the, the 90s, the only one they make in regular, but uh, the 105s and the 120s you can get in stiff or extra stiff flex. Uh, and they make uh, the full line here. They're all taper tip. 
and uh, you can get these, and then they also make a wedge variant as well. So I've actually got uh, the set, and then I've got the wedges as well, and uh, yeah, it's uh, they're, they're pretty cool looking. They are ex it's kind of interesting because, again, you won't see this on you know video in any way but uh they are good looking shafts they're all matte black and like a heavy matte black kind of reminds me of uh almost like a bed liner uh, for a truck it's got, almost got like a little texture to it uh, and then it is full black on the top and when on the underneath it just says dart v uh, with the ust uh, mamiya uh, logo on it and all that but it's done in like very light gray uh, the dart words are done in like a gloss matte black super stealthy uh you just like you can't see what they are which is which is kind of crazy but they look pretty mean they look really cool uh i was uh, a, a big fan of these things i was excited to try them i've been a graphite shaft guy for a long time uh ever since i got like tendonitis in my shoulder back in like geez 2006 six seven ish uh something like that and uh, i started using uh, graphite shafts i went online and got a set of uh what was it g loomis uh, uh imx borons or something like that uh just set a set of poles and uh i've been a big fan ever since i went back to steel a couple of years ago and now i just kind of fluctuate depending on uh, uh what i want uh, what i want to do and uh yeah i've been hitting a lot of uh, graphite iron shafts but these things here uh was pretty excited i've, I've I had a lot of people ask me about the dart v's uh, and i hadn't hit them and then uh you know my, my boy at ust reached out and uh got me a set and i've been uh, been pretty thrilled with them uh, since uh, i've got uh these 105 stiffs in the vega mizar tour heads and uh these things are, are great japanese forged uh kind of cheater heads we'll call them kind of game improvement a little bit uh they've got a hot face they got a forged body uh and they produce some ball speed they've got some really strong lofts I actually bent these back. Uh, I want to say these played off like a forty, like a forty-three degree pitching wedge or something like that, and they have like no offset already. So I bent them weak, uh, a couple degrees, and they really have no offset anymore. <laughs> uh, but they look really good from a dress. They're a little bit bigger overall size. Uh, when you look at them, they're kind of a bigger blade. But you know they don't. They've got a fairly thin top line. Uh, they look really like a players' club, and they're they're really soft, uh, and the ball goes like crazy. So uh, a set of irons I really like. Now I do have to say these iron these iron heads uh, are definitely low spin, uh, even being bent weak. Uh, they still don't put a ton of spin on the ball. So when I give you kind of the numbers there, uh, that number's going to seem a little low, and I would basically give most of that to the Mysar Tour head. It's just a low low spin head. Um, but overall, really love the looks. The concept, uh, TSPX concept, uh, is basically kind of their high end. They use the, the high end M40X uh, graphite material in these. Uh, it's basically got like dual action recoil technology. So they basically change the hoop strength to kind of flex, uh, you know, as they want it to throughout the swing. Um, and uh, yeah, they're extremely uh, stable and really consistent. So building them was actually very interesting. The original set of heads I was going to put these in was was a uh, set of Cobra King Tours that ended up being super light. Uh, the heads were very, very light. Uh, I think they were basically heads meant for like an over length build and they were like 10 grams light. So I couldn't uh, build up any, I, I basically, I tried these shafts first. I tried another set of shafts some others. Uh, none of the graphites are gonna get uh, close enough. I'm gonna have to go steal with those uh, so I can put some big tip weights in there. But uh, these were a great second option uh, because, and, and they actually, fit perfect i think during the build i put these together i play everything a little bit lighter i'm d2 d1 uh with graphite and uh i don't go much heavier than that my whole set pretty much plays around d2 until you get to wedges and then those go up to like d3 d4 uh but for the most part everything else is right around d2 um which is light but it's just kind of what i feel comfortable with i've, I've gotten used to it uh and these i want to say that this seven iron that's in my hand was the only one that needed a two gram tip weight uh, to get it to uh, D1. So these are all playing a D1. I did five through pitching wedge, uh, and then I did another wedge here that I'll talk about as well. And then I threw the four iron into a Cobra King Tech utility, uh, and that is actually going for my what's in the bag today. So it's not it's sitting right across the desk. Uh, but basically put up uh, all these things uh, in here, and I put a, a, a wedge shaft in the gap wedge. So. Got a bunch, of, you know, got everything shafted up, and then uh, I played these a handful of times since uh, since then, 
and been really impressed with them. I think these things are extremely stable. Uh, they're definitely stiffer than I thought they would be. Uh, you know, when you go one, you know, I, I think a lot of people, even to this day, you still have these notions of graphite shafts being extremely flexible, very lightweight, uh, unless they say like a 125 or something like that on them. Everybody thinks that they're super, super, uh, super, super light uh, or super, super flexible. And these are definitely not that. Uh, they are definitely stout. Uh, they play stiff. Uh, if you're someone who plays a stiff and like a steel shaft, even if it's like, you know, a dynamic gold or something heavy, uh, stick with the same flex. Because uh, if you play uh, stiff and you decide, hey, I'm going to go to X because I think these things are flimsy or whatever, uh, they are going to be uh, very, very stiff, very, very boardy. Stick with the flex that, uh, that, that, that you, uh, usually go with. Uh, for me, I'm a stiff flex. I, I swing at these, uh, when I was out kind of hitting on the launch monitor just to get some numbers for, uh, you guys, I swing right around kind of mid eighties. I was like just under 86 miles an hour with a seven iron. Uh, that is kind of my normal thing. Most of the time when I go hit there, uh, I'm right about that. Maybe the hot summer, I may get a mile an hour or two faster, but that is about it. All I've got in the tank anymore. So 105 stiffs uh, installed, like I said, really easy to do. Actually, I uh, want to say I'm pretty impressed with my ferrule work. I actually started taking a little more time and turning these down and making them look nice. So this whole set looks really, really solid. Uh, but built these basically uh, up and out on the course, uh, yeah, extremely consistent. Uh, you know, shots that you hit there, uh, you know, whether you miss it, whether you hit it dead flush, uh, you're going to get a shot that you expect. You're going to get, uh, you know, the distance you think out of it. There is no, at least so far, uh, and I've played two, 36, 45 holes of these things. Um, and I have not noticed any kind of like crazy flyer, any kind of weird shot that all of a sudden you get something that just like, you know, smokes up in the air and just goes forever. Uh, they've been extremely consistent with terms of ball flight, uh, and in terms of distance and all that, haven't noticed any kind of hot spots or, or crazy flyers. Um, the, you know, the, the one or two flyers that I've hit, uh, I'm going to basically kind of attribute to these are <laughs> very low spin heads and they were in kind of that flyer lie. Uh, but you kind of knew that going into it. Um, but the shaft wise, uh, really good feel to them. Uh, they're stout. Uh, they're definitely stiff. You can still feel them load. Uh, they're, they're definitely stiff up near the handle section. Uh, the kind of the, the flexible part of it, it feels kind of right kind of in the middle, uh, to me when you kind of start that transition into the downswing and the shaft starts to load, um, it kind of feels kind of right below, you know, right where the, the end of dart is the T and it kind of goes down through the logo. It feels like that's where kind of the, the, uh, the flex of the action happens more. Uh, and then the tip is still uh, pretty darn stout. These uh, and then you know it impacts you still get a little bit of kick. Um, I won't say it's as crazy as some other uh, graphite shafts that maybe you know feel a little bit more flexible or whatever, but these still do have a little kick and impact. Uh, so as those hands kind of decelerate, that shaft does feel like it's still you know using some of that built up energy, uh, but it's not crazy. It's it's not a ton of that. You get a little bit of it uh, and the ball goes, but for the most part, you're feeling you know a, a pretty stout, consistent uh, shaft. Uh, out uh, on the course for me. The launch was actually a little bit lower than the numbers I'm going to give you. It was funny when I was hitting it. I was like, man, I'm hitting this thing like really solid. I'm hitting it really well. Um, out on the course when I was hitting it, I kind of had a little bit lower trajectory uh, out there. And, you know, on the uh, the numbers here, it definitely doesn't show that. So yeah, it'll be interesting. Maybe I'm just getting more used to these and, and hitting them better. Uh, and then, like I said, I have been working, you know, swing-wise to try to correct a few things. So that could be helping as well. But uh, out on the course, I was kind of getting like a, a kind of mid, I'll call it mid-low trajectory uh, out there. A little bit flatter, coming out, uh, you know, flatter, more boring than I expected it to. Uh, and then, but still landing well and still stopping pretty well, even with, uh, the longer irons, you know, hitting a six iron into a green, uh, you know, you'd still get uh, a good amount of stopping power. Short irons were really easy to stop, but, uh, yeah, this thing's, uh, you know, came out a little lower, came out flat. I would say it's, it's listed as kind of a mid launch shaft. I think it's a true mid to slightly lower than that, uh, launching shaft. So for players looking for something they can maybe control a little bit more, uh, flight it down a touch. If you're someone who hits it really high, uh, these could be a great option in graphite. Uh, if you're looking to go either a little lighter or you're looking for the vibration dampening qualities of graphite where, you know, you got a, a bad wrist, elbow, shoulder, back, whatever, uh, these graphite shafts can definitely take some of that vibration away and, and, you know, give you a little bit of comfort, uh, as well. Uh, but yeah, trajectory wise, a little bit lower. And that was through the set, uh, you know, from the, the King tech utility down, 
uh, you know, a little bit lower. It was kind of, you know, nice in the pitching wedge. Uh, as I bent those things weak, they came out a little flatter, but they still came in uh, with, with a decent amount of spin and a, and a steep enough angle of attack or descent angle where the ball stopped pretty, pretty quickly on the, the green. Um, now these, I, I wasn't, you know, I'm not zipping anything back uh, or anything like that with, with this set. Uh, the heads are just too low spin. Uh, but I tell you what, anything out of the fairway that was more full shots, you didn't have to worry about uh, the ball really releasing. Uh, out of the rough, uh, they released a little bit more uh, than, than maybe I would truly want. Uh, but again, I think that's more, you know, head design than that. I think if I pulled these shafts and put them in another set of heads, uh, I would definitely see, you know, that kind of stopping power, uh, you know, kind of amplified. Uh, but overall, uh, throughout the set, you know, like I said, flatter trajectory there. Uh, I think, you know, in terms of, of hitting them straight, these things are definitely, I wouldn't say they're as hard to square up as axioms, but I think they're pretty much as, as, as consistent as steel when it comes to squaring them up. They're easy to square up. They're easy to hit straight. They don't really want to just, you know, go left really hard. Now you can hit them left just like I can, because I can hit anything left. Uh, but squaring them up, it does take somewhat of you releasing the club. You, you have to, you can't just kind of hang on to it because it's going to flare right. And that face is going to be open and you're going to miss the green, right? Uh, you, you know, but if you basically just trust your swing, hit it, you're going to have a, a, a nice, you know, nice, easy shot that just goes straight. Um, but like I said, if you do hang on to it or you don't trust it, uh, you can basically miss it a little bit. Right. Uh, but these things, uh, you know, as, as I said, very consistent, uh, shots hit, you know, whether it's off the tee, whether it's off the turf, you kind of knew what you were going to get. Um, I went into these again, these are, these heads are a little hotter. So distance wise, these are a little longer than some of the other ends I play. Uh, but distance wise, you could really, you know, easily trust it. And there wasn't much of a kind of learning curve or anything. I know with sometimes with new irons or, or new iron shafts, there's that kind of learning curve of, of how far do these things go? Uh, pretty much I, I trusted what this was like. These are, I play about a half half club longer than a lot of my irons that I own. So these, like a seven iron, is usually one sixty. This is like a one sixty five club. So uh, if I went into it with those kind of thoughts, uh, those are the yardages I hit. If I hit it good, uh, if I missed it, you know, I would you know lose some of that yardage. But uh, the overall, you know, distance control on these things really, really solid, uh, really good. And in terms of stability on miss hits, pretty darn good as well. I mean, there was, uh, you know, some shots that, that you know, I kind of get over the top, I kind of smother it, hit it off the toe, and those balls that usually go pretty hard left, uh, it did resist some of that twisting. The head never felt like it was just wanting to just, like, flop open, and those balls stayed, uh, stayed fairly straight. And, uh, you know, for... Misses low on the heel and stuff like that. Uh, I mean, they came out low, but they definitely had some spin to them. Uh, but they definitely were a little bit straighter than uh, than I noticed with, uh, like, these had Shimada Tours in them before. Uh, and then I had, I think I put Axions in them and, not, you know, now these. Um, but out of these, I, I, out of all, all the shafts that I've had in these, I think the miss hits definitely were probably straightest with these Dart Vs. Really consistent there. Um, and, yeah, I mean, like you said, feel, uh, definitely soft, takes away some of that vibration. Uh, it definitely is a, a little stiffer shaft. So out of, you know, compared to like, like say steel fiber and axiom and some of these others, I think you get a little bit more vibration to the hands with this. I think you get a little more feel out of it. Uh, when you hit it kind of that, that low heel shot that uh, I've been known to hit, uh, you, you do feel it a little more in the hands uh, than some of the others. It doesn't dampen as much, which I think for some players, they'll, they'll really like. You know, some players, uh, they like that feel and the, the feel to them on those miss hits to, to make adjustments and kind of recalculate things is important. And I think these offer uh, a lot of that uh, to the hands. They just, you know, give you a good feel of where did you strike it. And I can tell you on a very cold morning and you're hitting it low on there, you're going to feel a little bit more <laughs> here than you will uh, with some, some other shafts. But uh, like I said, but it's not, you know, it's not harsh. It, it's, it's a long way away from being harsh. I can go hit this thing off mats uh, like I was just doing tonight, uh, just hitting balls off mats a bunch and, you know, still have no type of soreness, anything anywhere on the body. And I'm that guy every once in a while hitting a lot on mats. I'll, I'll feel the elbow kind of get a little bit uh, sore. I won't say it's tennis elbow yet. Uh, I haven't iced it or whatever, but I can feel it, you know, a little bit of soreness down there and hitting these uh, off mats. I've had no problem with uh, with any of that, much like 
all the other graphite shafts that I hit. But uh, the iron shafts really, really good. Um, I think these things are, are really solid, you know, swing weight wise, as long as your heads are the right weight. I think they build up really easily. And uh, they're definitely something that's a, a little bit more on the stouter side for those stronger players who are worried about, you know, overpowering a graphite shaft or something like that. But the Dart V's really, really good. I, I kind of want to put, I kind of want to pull them out of here and put them in something else. I don't know what I'd put them in uh, at the moment, but I do want to kind of put them in something else just to see, uh, you know, if it's just kind of that low spin is just from these heads, uh, which I believe it is. But uh, put them in something else and just kind of see how it goes. But I really like this this setup. I've hit them pretty well, and uh, the Dart V is a, a really really solid uh, iron shaft. Now, the uh, the wedge shafts uh, the same thing. Uh, they look exactly the same. They basically just the only difference is on the bottom they say TSPX Concept Wedge, and uh, they are basically the exact uh, same. Uh, you know, if you're basically building these up, they're they're 105 gram or I think they come in at 104 grams for the uh, they're 105, but I think they come in 104s with the stiffs. Yeah, 104. Uh, but two degrees of torque, uh, really, you know, same thing, mid-launch. These are, the wedge ones are 37-inch blanks. And I think they match up really well with the irons. Uh, I know a lot of people want to go, you know, really heavy and all that. And you could go to the 120s uh, in stiff uh, and move up to the 120, and it's 121 grams. Um but I think the one, the 105, especially in the gap wedge, which is what I put in here, this is a basically an SM10 5008 uh, F grind that I had and uh, put these things together. And I think it matches up really well with the irons, even though it isn't heavier, it's the same weight. I think it still matches up really well. Uh, you get that kind of same feel of, of, you know, like loading and unloading and impact uh, throughout the, you know, especially with full shots. It just feels like an extension of one of the irons, which is really nice, even though it has a different grip on it than the uh, irons do. But uh, this thing is actually really solid. Uh, again, I, I really like the feel of this thing with the lighter shaft. Uh, it built up really well. This, again, I think I didn't have to put any tip weights in here, and this thing came out to D2, so a little bit heavier than uh, uh, than the irons. But didn't have to do anything to the build really. I don't. I, maybe a two gram tip weight in here. I don't a hundred percent remember. Uh, but if that it, that that was all it was 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 two grams to get it up to like I think it was D two or D three, uh, just slightly heavier than the irons playing its you know standard Titleist length. Um, but this thing here, even with the higher loft and the fifty degree ball comes out a little flatter, a uh, little more control. Uh, and this thing actually spins really well in the green. So again, when I said you know the low spin, oh I didn't get to the numbers. Um, but I'll, I'll get to that in a minute. Um, so anyway, this thing comes out, and it does actually spin really well. It stops on the green well. Uh, I've actually put thrown this in the bag in quite a few uh, different sets that I've played uh, in terms of uh, setups, and I've really liked it. I think the feel's really good. Uh, I think it softens up the, the miss hits on the Vokey just a little bit. I know some of the miss hits on, the, uh, on Vokey's can get just a little bit of click to them. Uh, this takes away just a, a, a touch of that, but really consistent again. I think for a wedge player who wants to be able to hit it high, flight it down, maybe hit you know hit a cut, hit a draw, whatever, do kind of what you want to do with it the dart v is going to allow you to do that it's going to do everything uh, you need it to do and again you know when you get to wedges you know the big thing is distance control can you hit the shots you need to hit the yardages you need to hit and it does that with no problem and it does have a, you know a, a, a stiff feel to it uh this one here uh the same thing the, the the loading of it probably feels just maybe a hair higher kind of like right in the logo on the wedge but it, it, it's probably consistent with the irons in terms of where it goes uh, just with the shorter club so had it in the 50 degree around the green it feels really good you know if you're hitting little pitch and wet uh, pitch and chip shots uh you know a little 20 yarders or even if you're just off the green stuff like that uh works really well and again you can kind of hit the different shots you can kind of play it back in the stance hit it low uh you know maybe play it a little bit forward hit it a little higher it's going to allow you to do everything uh that a steel shaft can do with maybe just a little softer uh feel to it but uh definitely consistent when you hit it you know hacking it out of some deep rough this thing never feels like the face is just getting ripped open uh or it's getting you know or the grass is grabbing the hosel and it's just shutting it down it just has a, a feel of consistency to it so i really liked it uh in the wedge uh as well uh and then i've got one more that i'm gonna i want to put in a sandwich i just don't know which one yet so i will be putting one in the sandwich shortly uh, but the, yeah, for these here, like I forgot, to, we'll jump into numbers for you. But uh, so with the seven iron, uh, I was out there hitting uh, hitting a bunch of balls. Uh, so you know, to go along with on course, uh, I was hitting a bunch of balls with this. Carry distance on average was 160. Uh, now there was some 166s and 169s. I think there was even a 171 in there. These things, these these heads are hot and they go, uh, and they're 
low spin. Uh, so 160 was my average carry uh, out of all the shots. And there was a couple 140s in there that I missed that I kind of hit low, either low toe, low heel. Uh, so I, I, I keep, you know, everything in there other than, you know, if it's an absolute terrible shot. So 160 was my average carry, which for this is about five yards shorter than my absolute optimal. Uh, and I was actually hitting it pretty decent uh, this evening. Spin is going to be, again, on the lower side at 48.92. That should probably be, uh, you know, say 500 or maybe just, yeah, probably about a 500 RPM more uh, to be a little more optimal. But again, I think that's more head. And if I bet these even a little bit more weak, I could probably get that back with no problem. Uh, ball speed was pretty fast at 112.3. Uh, there was even a couple that were faster than that when you look through the list, but uh, 112.3 was the average. Club head speed, as I said, 85.6, uh, which is pretty close to what I am with, with pretty much every 7-iron out there. Uh, and a smash factor of 132, which I think is pretty solid for a forged uh, a, a forged kind of player's looking iron. Uh, and then a launch angle of 18.9, which is definitely on the higher side for a 7-iron. But again, on the mat, I was hitting it uh, just a little bit higher than I was on the course. So it makes sense that I was hitting this a, a little bit better. But I'm going to uh, definitely, these Vs are definitely staying around. I'm definitely going to hit them in some other stuff. Uh, if, well, if, they, if they don't stay in these, they're definitely going in another set of irons. I don't know what yet, but we'll definitely, uh, these will be in the rotation. I really like them. I think they're just really consistent. They're, they're, they're easy to hit, uh, and they do everything you want them to do without being flashy because they're just stealth matte black so uh, a really impressive shaft uh, if you're looking for something uh you know a little bit on the stouter side uh, that uh that's going to offer you know good distance control really tight dispersion all that the dart v uh whether you're going to go you know whatever weight you're going to go uh, i think they offer you know the three different weights and, and, and there's a lot of options so if you want the the big heavy 120s they got them in stiff and x uh the 105 same thing stiff and x and then the 90 the 90 gram you can get in regular stiff or, or x so uh go to ustmamiya.com uh, that's U-S-T-M-A-M-I-Y-A. -A, and check out the Dart V iron shafts. Uh, you can get them through your TSPX dealer, and they have a thing on there. You can find that out, but definitely worth hitting. If you're thinking about graphite, another great option to uh, to go that down that road if you're, you're looking to go it. So... That is the Dart V from UST. Uh, and yeah, let's, uh, before we get into the next item uh, on the list, my accessory, um, you know, have you heard of this company, Olakai? O-L-U-K-I-I. -I. It's two Hawaiian words that mean comfort and ocean, and their shoes deliver. They're making golf shoes now that are as comfortable as their legendary sandals, and I'm a guy who's been wearing their sandals for like six years. I love the sandals. They're phenomenal. Maybe you've seen them on the Brian Bros or Grant Horvat. Take it from us. You will never want to take them off. Available in both men's and women's, waterproof leather and sporty styles, spikeless, Get a pair now at olakai.com. You can also have them where the whole back heel folds down, and you can just wear them as slides if you're heading to the 19th hole. Pretty cool design. So go to olakai.com, O-L-U-K-A-I.com. Check them out. Like I said, I've been a huge sandal fan for years. I've been wearing them. I was actually just wearing them today when I took my old daughter to swim class. So love the comfort of them. Uh, I used to wear them in the winter. So check them out. Great uh, golf shoes. Totally new sole design. Uh, yeah, really, really nice stuff. So... The next thing we're going to talk about uh, is more of an accessory, and uh, it is an accessory that I've had. Well, I, I had the old version. Now I just got the new version, and I really like the new version. So it is the brand new Bushnell Wingman 2. So the Wingman 2 is the newest version of uh, uh, the Wingman. They had... Uh, you know, the original wingman was basically this round kind of uh, cylinder speaker, and the old one looked pretty similar. Uh, this one's got some gray on it now, along with the orange. The other one's all black. Uh, but the wingman two is uh, is brand new from Bushnell, and this is the same thing where it's a not only a speaker to play your music and all that, but it also still has the GPS function built into it. So not only will you be able to jam out to whatever tunes you like. Uh, you put this uh, nice little, you know, little disc that comes on the top, little remote control, and when you press the button, it will tell you your distance to the hole. Uh, it's pretty cool. It basically pairs up with the Bushnell app, uh, but you can basically, you can. This thing here has a ton of different options. It, the the thing that I love about it, of course, like everything, it's got the magnet on it, so you can stick it to the frame of the cart, and it's just there. 
you can you know jam out with your buddies it's bluetooth uh and it's got great sound it, it really does it sounds really good it's got some bass to it um it's definitely not a cheap uh speaker it uh it, it just got you know it, it'll get loud if you want it to it'll, you can keep it quiet uh, i'm usually on the quiet quieter side uh, when i do that uh, but it's got on the on the bottom of it you can basically you can charge it and then it's also got a usb uh, uh a regular usb i think it's a uh slot there as well you can plug in your phone charge your phone or charge like your your watch or whatever you need to charge up you can charge it right off this um they've already got uh, basically you can get readings from thirty eight thousand different courses <clears throat> and the one big thing that i love that they did to it was the previous one which i have it's actually right here which is right here which is great but as you notice there is no remote control on the top and that is because i basically lost it like two weeks in not even i think i lost it. i threw the thing in my car or whatever gone never found it the the magnet on that thing was just not strong enough uh this one here they definitely fixed it the magnet on here is substantially stronger it actually takes uh, a little bit of work to get your finger in this little notch to get it out of there uh which is great because i i've already you know used it once haven't lost it and that thing i think i used it like twice or three times and i lost the remote instantly now you can buy a new one they make them uh you know separate you can buy a new one i think they're only they're pretty cheap i don't think they're expensive but uh they definitely upgraded that thing there um and uh yeah it's just and it's actually got its own magnet so you could take this you could have the the bushnell somewhere uh locked on and then you could have this actually clipped onto something metal as well and you know press it you know if it's somewhere on the card or something like that it's just easier you could you know have it in two you know two places but uh they did a really nice job making that a little nicer uh the button is a little more defined on it as well uh you can kind of feel it in your pocket a little better if you just have it uh, uh on the pocket but they did a really nice job with that um yeah the bite magnet mount is is really good it stays in place well uh we played uh i played 18 with it well I played 18 with it. I played 9 and 9. Uh, but I played 18 with it. It stays in, in, in the cart really well, even going over some rough condition. Um, and then you can also pair this thing uh, with another Wingman 2 uh, or Wingman View for like a surround sound. Uh, like I, I don't have one of those other units, so I can't do it. But uh, you can actually pair it up so you can kind of have like dual surround on the cart, which would be kind of cool. Um, but yeah, it's uh, basically you can do custom sound bites. You can record stuff on there uh, and play little sound bites that, you know, if you want to talk trash to your buddies, anything like that. Uh, but overall, it's just a really good speaker. They've also added an external battery uh, light on it. So it'll tell you uh, what the battery you know level is. I played with it for both nine holes, and I think maybe it lost one uh the one dot on the uh the battery marker so uh it definitely lasts 18 holes uh, and i think it'll probably i think they say it'll last 36 uh but yeah it definitely has uh, some decent uh, time to it in in terms of uh how long it'll last they say 14 hours so you can get you can get a couple rounds in but like i said i think i played nine and maybe one little dot uh, from the battery uh came off it is water resistant or pretty close to waterproof uh, I played with it. I had it on Saturday, Sunday morning when I played. I had it on the cart. And at certain times, you steered the cart certain ways. The roof of the cart would just be pouring water down the side of this thing. Uh, and it was still playing, still jamming out, was doing everything it needed to. It was great. Uh, the other thing, too, uh, with the old one, and I think it was me. I think I didn't look at the settings. But when you hit the button, it would give you the audible distances. So you'd hit the button. It would say you're, you know, 156 from the hole or whatever, you know, whatever the distance was. And, uh... But it was really quiet, and I felt like, we, especially on a par three, like you park the cart right next to the tee box, and you'd hit the button, and, and like everybody would have to stop talking and have to kind of like listen and see what it said, you know, or hear what it said. And this one here, when you hit the button now for the GPS, it, it, it's it's definitely more audible. It's easier to hear. You don't have to like you know tell everybody to quiet down and all that. Uh, it, it, it's definitely you know again maybe it's a default setting that's just better. Uh, but the the old one, I always struggled with hearing it uh, before I lost the 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 remote but uh it was you know a, a really uh, easy thing but i i really like this thing i think it's really good uh it stayed in place i mean everything it does i mean the nice thing is too is that you can just have it as a bluetooth speaker so if you go out and you know just want to hang out in your backyard and you know entertain some friends you can stick this on say if you have an umbrella uh you know 
a pole that umbrella that comes through the middle of your uh, you know your table. If it's metal, stick it on there. You've got something right there that you can play music on. It sounds really good. Uh, it definitely is not a cheap tinny sound or anything like that. Um, the nice thing is the the thing's got uh, all the courses already loaded, so thirty eight thousand uh, you know courses already in there. So your course is probably in there. I haven't played one that isn't uh, on there. And uh, yeah, just overall, I was, I was I really liked it. I thought it was uh, really impressive. I mean the uh, um, the GPS thing is really good. Uh, you know, it works really well. It's pretty uh, not intrusive. You know, you throw this thing in your pocket and you just reach in, hit the button. It'll tell you the yardage and it's done and it goes back to playing, you know, the best of bread or whatever you're listening to. Um, so, you know, if you listen to, you know, rap, if you listen to country, if you listen to rock, whatever, it's going to sound good. But they just did a good job. It's got a, a lot of nice features. It pairs up super fast. Um, I basically charged it at the office. When it came in, took it out for I didn't pair it before, and I paired it up like while it was sitting in the cart. It took two seconds. It was like right on my phone. Boom, there it was. Paired it up, and, and off we went. So uh, super easy to use, uh, super easy to connect. I mean, everything about it. I was uh, pretty impressed with it. So I think they've taken the little things uh, about the the original Wingman and just improved them. Uh, and if you like the original one, this new one is uh, is definitely uh, definitely really good. So. Um, yeah, if you're looking for a, a great, uh, you know, speaker, you want GPS with it, whatever, uh, the, the, the wingman too is really nice. I really liked it and uh, it'll definitely be on the cart. Uh, when I go play, it'll probably be on there all the time. I'll probably just bring it and, uh, and it'll be kind of my go-to. So I got to charge it up for tonight and, uh, it'll probably be with me, uh, playing this evening, uh, at, in the old league. I can play kind of quiet. Some of the old guys, you know don't like the music or whatever but uh but i like listening to this to you know something a little quieter and uh relaxing but uh, yeah check out the wingman too if you just go to bushnellgolf.com get all the specs on and all that but uh, a really nice update to uh, something that i loved anyway and uh, the new one is just a little bit nicer and i like it a little bit better so bushnellgolf.com check out all the specs on that uh and uh yeah it's uh, a solid solid unit so that's all I've got uh, today. Hopefully you guys uh, had a, have had a good week. We'll have a good weekend. Hope you're playing some golf. I know I'm going to try to. I don't know. Um, we'll see. I don't know what's going on this weekend, but I'm definitely playing tonight. So anyway, if you want to follow me on IG, uh, Club Junkie Pod. Uh, thank you guys for all the Q and A's. We did a big Q and A today and got a lot of great questions and answers and stuff. I uh, did that. If you want to watch this on YouTube. Go right ahead. Uh, just search Club Junkie or Golf the Bricks Radio. And wherever you're listening to the podcast, please like, subscribe. I know it's, I hate saying it. I hate being that guy, but it definitely helps out. So, you guys have a good week and play some golf, and we'll chat next week.